Welcome everyone to a great competitive game between Enigmas as the Lizardmen going against Blood OG Mine as the Greenskins. So for the start here of the Greenskin Force, in the front we're going to come with the Dreaded Morgrove's Mangy Marauders. Here with the Immune to Psychology and also a bucket load of AP there for the Skirmish Cavalry, making them quite a nuisance here up against the Lizardmen. In the back we are going to have one unit of the Forest Goblin Spider Riders, backed up by three of the Armor Piercing Shock Cavalry here with the Orc Boar Boys. In the middle for the main battle line we are going to have three units of the Black Orcs, Great AP and Immune to Psychology, which will be great up against all those big large dinosaurs, backed up by the Double Goblins in the front with the Silver shields and also here the regiment of renown here for the night goblins the da eight peak loonies here with the loons of eight peaks very very good indeed at removing all good infantry and unbreakable making them a very good strong frontline troop so grum the paunch as the lord joyce here on the chariot the lucky banner as well as the greatness here language of the boys and generation as the tool kits for the hero and the last unit, we are going to have the Orc Shaman here with Here We Go, plus 40 mil attack is super strong there and a 40 meter radius alongside Brain Buster to really delete all that cheap and cheerful chaff. So in the front, we are going to start with the Salamander Hunting Packs here for the Lizardmen. Fire and anti-large damage, very good there up against Grom. Backed up here by four units of Source Warriors, two being Spears and two being here with the Maces. And also here the Cohort of Sotek. Now, of course, Unbreakable, Frenzy and Refuse to Die, making it very strong here when partnered up with Healing. But in the back here, we're also going to have four units of the Skin Cohort Javelins. Very good anti-infantry tools. And uh, those javelins for 100 gold can certainly do a lot of damage. Krogar here in the middle, the man, the myth, the legend here with, of course, Hand the Gods. And also the Sacred Spawning of Exotel. 20% physical resistance and also 18% vigor is super strong for a character just as like him. We're going to be backing up here with the Sora Scar Veteran, Anti-Large, as well as Armor Piercing. The Plaque of Domination, negative 8 leadership, very good as well, alongside the Potion of Strength for extra AP and base weapon damage. In the back, we are going to have the double artillery pieces here with the Bastilodon Solar Engines as magic and fire damage, which will really do some good work here up against the cavalry and most importantly, Grom. In the back, we are going to have the Skink Priest of Beasts here with the transformation of Gadon with Flock of Doom. Not a particular fan of this spell. I, I, don't think, I don't particularly think it's that strong for six wins of magic. I think maybe even going Amber Spear just for a little bit of extra cost is, is certainly more worth it. But uh, still here with Wild Heart, which is going to give extra mana and mana reserves, is uh, certainly quite nice here for the Lizard Men. So Big Shop's coming downtown, so we are going to be pushing off. Nice damage there. Early doors here on the Morgoth's Mangy Marauders. Very nice work indeed. Salamander Hunting Packs, we're going to certainly delete the Skirmish Cavalry in the front. And normally Greenskins do come with quite a wide Skirmish faction, but it looks like today they are going to go with a bit more heavy armor-piercing shot cavalry. And look at the shots down the line here. Unfortunately, these all boys must be maintained with their mobility. If they don't keep moving, they are going to get ripped apart here by the Basilodon Solar Engines. And if they are moving, they're also going to be able to shoot up against the Blackhawks. And that's what makes these Solar Engines so goddamn good. If they're not destroying Grom, there's always units on the battlefield here they can really rip into. Now, what I really like here, the Salamantic Hunting Packs are going to be shooting here. It looks like we do actually have Hand of the Gods going downtown. Hand of the Gods only does a little bit of damage up against Grom. I'm very surprised there. It looks like a lot of the uh, missiles there certainly hit him, and it does do fire damage. So I'm very surprised they did so little damage. In the middle now, we do have the Saurus Warriors fighting up against the Night Goblins. Certainly want to be shooting these units rather than engaging in combat. 15 seconds of engagement will actually allow them to use that Loon ability that will delete some Saurus Warriors. In the middle here, also we have Black Orcs fighting up against Source Warriors. Down below, we are going to get the Shock Cavalry charging straight through up against the Cohort of Sotek. A nice pop there for Refuse to Die. And here go the Loons. Loons in the middle are going to delete a lot of these Source Warriors. Look at these fanatical lunatics getting in there with those ball and chains. Absolutely fantastic. In the middle of the Skink Priest, I'm sure it's going to get pretty close here. Oh, even so, just as I say it, we are going to get the Summon in here. And that's definitely going to put maybe a bit of pressure here on the Orc Charm. That's probably where I would look to put this big beastie. In the back, also, we are going to get the cavalry in. All boars do have some very good armor piercing stats. They can really wreck apart the Salamander hunting packs and put some big pressure here on the Bastilodon solar engines. That looks to be the case. So we are going to whip there and try to get some good AP damage here on the back. You can see chunks of damage are going to be coming off here, the Bastilodon. They've got a great surround, but he can certainly push off with Terra as well. In the middle of the side, we are going to get that war, which is going to be coming in with some nice abilities. And maybe Placa Domination has a potion of strength, and it must be Placa Domination. Yeah, Placa Domination, negative 8 leadership is actually really huge here, especially when including fear. It's negative 16 there on anything in this radius of 40 meters. So Black Hawks are going to be fighting. They'll do some great AP damage here against the Sora Scar Veteran. Looks like here we do manage to break the Orc Shaman. We're going to be pushing through the range as well, really destroying the backside here, putting some nice pressure on the Greenskins. 
over here on the left-hand side. Certainly going to be winning from the green skin front. Blackhawks are going to be chewing pot the cohort of Sotek, but these bad boys certainly will uptrade and value up against the Blackhawks. The Source Warriors, very tanky indeed, but they do break here in the middle pocket. Blackhawks are certainly one of the toughest units in the games to take down. And so here we are going to be shooting with some nice solar engine shots in the middle. In the back here, we are going to be using the Saurus Guard Veteran to chase off with the Forest Goblin Spiders. They have been terrified, they will immediately return, but here they do really lack the AP to punch hard against the hero. In the back here, we do manage to get some nice chase off here on the Orc Shaman. Nice stuff coming out of Enigmas, really taking care of this Orc Shaman. That uh, plus 40 melee attack spell is super strong here for the Greenskins. We do get a shot, and that is going to be a finish and a kill there, and a nice pick up there coming in for the Lizard Men. We can hear in the back here the second and final summon coming in the back for the Ferromanticore. And this bad boy can certainly put some more pressure on Grom or maybe on the cavalry. Its weapon strength can really help punch units down in one nice big foul swoop. In the back here we have the Salamantic Hunting Packs getting chased off here by the Orc Boys. They should return here on the lead ship. I just don't know if this is too close. I believe anything in a 40 meter radius should be able to keep this from routing, but it all depends. What sort of speed are we talking about? 70 here going up against 70. With that charge bonus, if we do get close enough, maybe, maybe we'll have to see if we do get a return here. In the back, arrow is going to be firing here. 140 armor should negate a lot of the damage here coming out of the Bacillon Solar Engine. Manticore is going to be fighting up against Black Orcs. You don't really care too much about the AP, but the Terror Route uh, could be certainly handy. But of course, immune to psychology for the Black Orcs is going to keep them going. It looks like the Sally, the Salamanders are going to get pushed off, unfortunately. But we still have this really scary core here. Crocgar, alongside the Saurus Scar Veteran, could certainly do some big bad work here. So in the middle, double arrows are going to be firing in. Up against the Saurus, might not be too bad, but they do have 60 armor and shield, so probably not the probably not the ideal target. But in the middle here, the Manticore is certainly going to be at the end of day, so you can see that orange glow means it is going to be breaking and falling off the battlefield pretty quickly. But good damage here up against Grom for sure. 450 weapon strength, you really can't shake a stick at that. You can certainly be happy with the damage output up against Grom. In the back, Spider Riders are going to return. Orc Arrow Boys kind of get a compromise here by the skin cohort. But that war is certainly going to be very helpful here in the back. Especially for the cavalry. They really do struggle with melee attack. But now they could really poke with some good AP up against the Bastillodon. Still not even at half health. Doing very well indeed. So it looks like here in the middle, the Skin Priest of the Beast getting pressured here by Grom. 90 charge bonus with also that anti-infantry trait is really good up against small little heroes here like the Skink Priest. Got to be careful though here, Blackhawks are starting to get low. These boys are tanky, but unfortunately the main meat of the army is going to be falling apart. Flock of Doom in the back, going to do damage here against the Orc boys, Grom and some Blackhawks. But here there's just a bucket load of AP in the middle that's really going to be hitting here up against the Basilodon. We don't really have any support here in the back, unfortunately. Flock of Doom is kind of all we could offer there. And although Balance of Power says it's still relatively even, you can certainly see the Greenskins are starting to pull apart the force here of the Lizardmen. It's starting to get a bit close, unfortunately. It looks like we do get maybe a terror route here. We do get a terror route from the Orc boys. Down at half health here for the second Bastillodon. We do break with the Black Orc. Six models still left. They should return. But uh, we'll have to see what happens in time. Charging over here with Grom the Pawn. She has enough weapon strength. He could do some good damage here against the Bastillodon. But if he does turn and fight, yeah, it could be a bit of an even trade here perhaps. In the back, Crocgar here alongside the Saurus Guard Virtue. Going to be fighting up against some range. Some of these tools are still going to be on the battlefield. Orc Arrow Boys are actually surprisingly hard to get rid of. They are very good, decent melee combatants. And especially there with War as well, they will punch a lot harder than their stat line make, make you believe. Now in the middle, nice here. We are going to see Coldblood used perfectly coming in from Enigmas. It's going to land the fight up against Grom. That looks like it is going to be going down here pretty quickly. But they do get some decent damage on Grom. Those anti-large spears can certainly do some brilliant work. Hand of the Gods coming downtown. Oh my god, brilliant damage here up against Grom. Fantastic 360 no scope there coming out of Crocgar. And that could be the end of days here. Grom is going to be seriously weak. And are we going to get a turn and burn here coming from the Basilodon? I wonder. He's going to be down to 420 HP. It's like we are going to turn. Are we going to be able to kill here up against Grom though? Big shot and Grom gets finished. All the way down the line there. That might even be a double hit here coming out of the Basilodon. But that fire damage, 403 missile strength is certainly very strong indeed. Brilliant finish there coming out and showing how good Hand of the Gods can be. Hence why I was so surprised from that first ability. Brilliant win there coming out of Enigmas. Finishing off Grom there. That negative leadership is so huge against the Greenskins. Of course, they do have a, what we call a slightly lower average leadership there for, you know, an average faction. They're not, not particularly good here with their goblins and, and mid-tier units of the Orc Arrow Boys. But yeah, really, really well played to both these players. A very good competitive game. Grom was used to quite some nice ability. 103 kills, 1,250. That one hand of the gods there with the 360 no-scope finish off here by the Bastillodon really did the business. And so we've got zero damage value there for the Orc Shaman. 
380 and 320 there for the Goblins. Very, very strong units. I've seen these things even used with triple gold chevrons. Uh, they can trade so efficiently. Here with War as well. If you make the triple gold chevrons, they get some amazing stats and increase the, uh, as well with that uh, leadership. Can make them actually more durable than you might actually think. 96 kills, 680 there for the 8 peak loonies. 930, 126 kills for the Black Orcs. 220 and 720. So the triple Black Orcs here are getting dealt with quite quite easily and quite well here by Enigmas. You know, for example, having the Bastilodons, maybe even the Salamander Hunting Packs might have got a, may, maybe got a couple of shots in. But you can see here the Kota Sotek, 661. Yeah, maybe not then, maybe not. But, uh, you know, we certainly saw some good work here going up against the Black Orcs. 400 as well as 340, 670 and 480 there for the Orc Arab Boys, so pretty good performance there indeed. We have 200 for the Forest Goblin Spiders with 468, 448 and 650 here for the Orc Boys. I expected more, I, this, this certainly won't be the one. This must be here the unit that was wrapped around the Basilodon, but you can see there even only 470 damage value. I'd certainly expect more from a unit that I think that costs 1200 gold. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame, I actually expect there to be maybe, maybe, maybe just the, the lack of anti-large there perhaps is what let them down. But you can see even 530 damage value for the Morgrub's Mangu Marauders. These things got hit pretty hard early doors. They were already down to half health, which is roughly what you're going to see on the screen here. And they still managed to get over 500 damage value in this battle. Can't, coming in at 600 cost, this thing is so goddamn cost efficient. But very, very well played there to Blood OG Mine. But of course, there, that Hand of the Gods was going to finish off his game. Krogar, 60 kills, 1,940. Kind of kind of found him using his mobility and shutting down a lot of the range units here, coming in from the Greenskins. And we also saw the, the Sword Scar version, 512. Pretty, cl pretty close to him for the most of the game. 180 for the Skink Priest, 480, 230 as well for the Source. A little bit of a shame there for the Spears, 750 and 580, so a little bit better. 680 we saw there for the Cohort of Sotek, coming under par, but I think these are very, very good here with also just healing. Maybe even just a cheeky Earthblood, or maybe an Apotheosis can be quite nice, because they do have the Unbreakable, and also there with that Refuse to Die, they can go down to one health, and you can heal all the way back up and maintain that model count, so they can be really nice there with just a little bit of healing. 504, 480, 320, and 220 there for the Skin Coat Hot Javelins. So good performances for two, but the other two were going to suffer here just with Black Hawks on the battlefield. It's so goddamn difficult. 780, 1300 as well. So really nice work here from these two with 460 there for the Salamander Hunting Packs. But really well played to both of these. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please smash that like button. It really helps here on the channel. And if you haven't already, do feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to know all your thoughts and opinions. Otherwise, do feel free to subscribe. Obviously, the more support they get, the, the bigger we can get. And, of course, the more I can do for all of you. Do feel free to check out the description where you can find all my other social media platforms, including Twitch. But most importantly, check out that Discord. Anything I ever do here on Twitch or YouTube, you can find there on the Discord. That's going to be my single player or my multiplayer campaigns. Any Warhammer 3 content I have coming forward. And maybe some other games. Maybe I'll be doing some Age of Empires or maybe some other games here in the future as well. So anything I do... Do go check out that Discord. Other than that, I've been your boy Logic. Take care of yourself during these times, and I'll see you all very, very soon.